There was an old player, Richard Teichman, who said that chess is 99% tactics. And the debate has continued to the present day as to whether this statement is correct. But there's no doubt about it. Tactical control within a game is extremely important. And it's especially important when you're starting out in chess. A study of basic tactics is highly important. What this does is to make you a very difficult person to beat. You've often heard of the boxing match where the loser says, I couldn't lay a finger on the champion. And the reason he can't lay a finger on the champion is simple. The champion has seen all his moves coming before he even thinks about executing them. That's what's known in the trade as tactical control. So study of tactics doesn't necessarily mean you're going to be able to let loose these tactics in the game, the fork, the pin, the skewer, the discovered attack, the decoy, all manner of, of tactical ideas. But what it will mean is that it gives you control of the game. And control of the game is what strong players like because it gives them the opportunity to execute their plans. Now let me give you an example now of what tactical control is all about. Again, I'm going to use one of my own games. It comes from a tournament played in England back in 1984. And playing white is the international master from India, Ravi Kumar. The opening is known as the Nimzo Indian Defence. And it's characterised by the pinning move Bishop B4. This is a very good opening to play for any level of player. Although it's quite a sophisticated opening. By pinning the knight... Black controls the e4 square and he makes it very very difficult for white to play the move e4. After all that's the move white wants to make in this position if he can which would grab the centre. So bishop b4 pins the knight and controls the centre because of the pin. Ravikumar's next couple of moves are fairly standard whilst black castles White brings his bishop out to d3, perhaps renewing the threat of e4. So this is why black plays d5. So I was pleased with this move. It's another standard move in this position. Black takes the centre. He controls the position tactically by stopping white from breaking free with the move e4. And it's a very constructive move. White is getting sick and tired of the pin and he plays a3. And black is happy to just take the knight on c3 and play pawn up to c5 because it doesn't waste any time. And again, black is looking just as, as much as white is really to, to challenge for the centre of the board in the opening. Well, now we get a rather confusing position, but the more you think about it, the more really the tactics are under, under control from black's point of view. White took on d5 and that's a good move because it gets rid of the double pawns. And black was happy to take back with the pawn. You'll note that white is being allowed to play pawn takes pawn. But that really is a very bad move. White gains a pawn temporarily, but just look at his pawn structure. I'll be talking a little bit about pawn structure in the uh, intermediate DVD, the, the second DVD in this series. But we call this type of pawn on a3 isolated pawn. And we call these pawns on c3 and c5 doubled isolated pawns. Basically, they're very bad. So black could easily regain his pawn here with a simple move like queen a5. I mean, black probably has other moves in this position. But that's simple enough. And black, in view of the double attack on c5 and c3, gets his pawn back with a better game. He's got more pieces developed. He's got pressure on the weak white pawns. So going back to the game, Ravi Kumar just develops his knight with knight e2. And black, well, black's got a small catching up session to do with development on the queen side. So b6 was played. Castles by white, knight c6, knight g3. And now I put my knight on a5 and white decided to play f3. Rook e8. Right, so what are the respective plans in this position? Black is trying hard to stop white from playing e4. 
as I said in the opening phase of the game, you know, White was trying to get this move in. Well, we've reached the early middle game, and White is still trying to get the move e4 in. It looks as though White can play that move, but Black is keeping the position under tactical control. Because if White plays e4 in this position, Black would take on d4, and then he'd take on e4, with a sudden attack on the pawn at d4. White doesn't really want to give up his light square bishop in this position, but he would probably have to in order to save that pawn on d4. Anyway, Black plays knight takes bishop with a very comfortable game. So going back to rook e8, I was happy that, for the time being, I had stopped White from executing his plan, and Rabi decided to play rook a2. This looks a very strange move, but White's plan is to introduce the rook into the game, maybe on e2, and then again to go through with his plan of e4. Possibly after rook e2, White would need to play bishop b2 first, in order to keep the pawn on d4 protected. But rook a2 is a good move. Now I took on d4. Well, again, a tactical move, because if, if black is trying to stop white from playing e4, this is a very good move. White certainly doesn't want to take back with the e-pawn in this position, because it would mean he, he can't get the move e4 in. So Ravi takes back with the c-pawn. And now comes another very good tactical maneuver. Knight to b7, rook e1. Bishop e6, again a good move, preventing white from playing e4, because if he goes e4, we take that pawn, and suddenly there's a discovered attack on the rook. So after bishop e6, white played rook f2, black played rook to c8. There is still difficulty for white in playing that move e4, because once again this pawn will be attacked. So white goes bishop b1, and now black plays knight to d6. So, we're reaching really the, the critical position of the game. It's still very, very difficult for White to, to play this move e4 easily. And if he doesn't get e4 in, his position is not easy to play because he can't get this bishop on c1 into the game. Basically, the move e4 liberates that bishop and makes it easier for White to handle the position. But Black is controlling the game using tactical ideas to help him. Anyway, Ravi played queen to d3. Now, the name for this setup is a battery. A battery is two or more pieces uh, acting together against a certain point in the enemy camp. So the queen and the bishop would very much like to come down to h7 and give checkmate. So possibly white is thinking about a move like knight h5. That's what we call a decoy. White decoys the knight away from f6 in order to get down to h7. Black plays bishop d7, getting out of the way. White went h3. Just going back, I suppose white could, if he wanted to, play knight h5 in this position. But after that, I think black, again, gets a pretty comfortable game by going bishop f5. Covering all bases. White would have to take on f6, and then black recaptures with the queen. All white has achieved, really, is to develop black's pieces for him. So white decided just to play h3. Black blocks the diagonal. This is a good idea in many positions where the enemy is challenging on a diagonal. If you just put a pawn in front of the pieces on that diagonal, you block them out of the way. White got his bishop onto the modest square d2. Black attacked the white queen. The queen moved to b3. Black attacked the white queen again. And White moved his queen back to, to b2. So around here, White was getting quite frustrated. Although it's 25 years or so ago, I can still remember the sense of frustration I, I felt coming across me from the other side of the board. White is no further down the line towards playing e4 than he was 10 moves ago, let's say. And without that move, as I've said before, White cannot really activate his pieces. Bishop a6, dropping out of the way, possibly making room for the knight to come to c4, which is a fork. And now, against his better judgment, white moves forward with e4. White is getting sick and tired of being frustrated from playing that move, and now he decides to, to play it. Although, I think it's probably the wrong moment. Knight c4. Quite a nasty fork. 
The white queen must keep on the pawn at d4. I took the bishop on d2, white recaptured. I took the pawn on e4, f takes e4, and now I move Ravi Kumar missed a tactical shot, knight to d5. And this was my plan. There are a whole sea of dark squares in the white camp just waiting to be exploited. The black knight has tremendous prospects here. He can come to c3, he can come to e3, he can come to f4. And black is also threatening to bring the queen into the game with the help of queen g5. Suddenly black has the better game and white went through with e4 at the wrong moment. Ravi Kumar tried king h2 protecting the knight. It's a common master idea. If you can't see what to do, you make a move which strengthens your position slightly. And in this case, white just protects the unprotected knight on g3. Black brings his queen out to g5. That's part of the business. You'll note that the pawn on e4 is still pinned. If white takes on d5, the black rook comes down here with a ruinous capture on e1. So after queen g5, white went rook to c2, hoping to swap off and somehow to nullify black's pressure by swapping off. In came the black knight. If you can establish a, a knight in the heart of your opponent's position, then it's usually a good thing to do. As long as the knight can't be ejected or just attacked and, and to move aside, this is a very good idea. Ravi Kumar went rook c3, and now another tactical move, which I'm sure he, if not overlooked, underestimated, knight takes g2. Well, it's not good anymore for white. If white takes this knight, there is an absolutely killing check on d2. That's a fork. Both rooks are attacked. If the knight comes back to e2, this really doesn't help. Black can simply take it off, and white is still faced with this same dilemma. So knight takes g2 was answered by rook g1. Again, white has failed to lay a glove on black in this game because of tactical control. Knight comes to h4, queen comes to b2, which cuts out black's check on d2 with the queen. Rook takes c3, queen takes c3, and now rook c8. So again, a small tactical operation, which results in black taking the open file. Queen goes to b3, in comes the black queen to d2, king goes to the corner, and now a final very nice move to finish, rook to c1. Again, tactically based pinning the rook on g1 and threatening queen to g2 checkmate which is about as unstoppable as a threat can be. So although that game was played at the master level it's an object lesson from my perspective on tactical control. So remember learn basic tactics learn the concept of tactical control in your games. Tactical control gives you command of the position it will stop your opponent from laying a glove on you the whole game through.